So it is a bridge used to measure the self-inductance of the coil. It enables the measurement of the inductance by utilizing the resistors and capacitors, the I3, because the same current is passing through this one. And I2 is equal to IC plus I4. This detector shows the zero deflection because no current is flowing through that one. So at this balanced condition, the potential AB is equal to AG. 3 contains 2 unknown terms. One is I2 and another one is IC. Now we are going to determine these two unknown terms. We are substituting the value of I2 and IC in the equation 3. So this is the equation 3. So now we have to take the real and imaginary parts separately. L1 is equal to CR3 by R4 into R2 plus R4 into R plus R2 R4. So this is the final expression. Hi, in this video, we are going to derive the expression for the self-inductance of the coil by using the Anderson's bridge method. You might have seen many methods, but this is the best and shortcut method that you have ever seen. In this Anderson's bridge method, let's see what is the Anderson's bridge is. So it is a bridge used to measure the self-inductance of the coil. It enables the measurement of the inductance by utilizing the resistors and capacitors. And it was invented by Alexander Anderson in the year 1891. So it is the modified Wheatstone bridge to measure the self-inductance. Since the fixed capacitance is used here, more accurate result is obtained in this. Here we have taken the inductor or coil whose self-inductance is L1 and resistance R1 which is connected in series with the small resistor R1. R2, R3, R4 like a Wheatstone bridge as shown in the figure. Smaller capacitor and a detector connected like this. When the source of EMF is taken and connected to this circuit, the current passed by the source of EMF I is taking two paths. You can take the example of water pipe connected to two pipes. So if the single pipe is connected to two pipes, the water moves in both pipes, isn't it? In the same way, the current I takes two paths, I1 and I2. Hence, the I1 is equal to I2 here. Another path is I2. I2 that takes the path AD and DEC one path. Another path is DC path. Like this. So, since the current is passing through capacitor, we take this current as IC and this as I4. Now, the circuit is completed. When the potential is applied, the main current takes two paths. As we said, the I1 path and I2 path. That means the potential difference between these two paths AB and AD is equal. So no current flows through this detector. Hence this when the current passing through this detector is zero, the circuit looks like this. That is I1 current is equal to the I3 because the same current is passing through this one. And I2 is equal to IC plus I4. So now we are checking this as the equation 1. When the potential difference between the AB and the ADE is equal, the current passing through this detector is zero, as we discussed just now. Hence, this detector shows the zero deflection, because no current is flowing through that one. So at this balanced condition, the potential AB is equal to AE. The potential AE can be written as 
two parts. One is A D plus D E. A D plus D. So this is uh, the potential uh, that we have split it A E into two parts. As we see in the figure, this is the A D plus D E is taken as A E. Okay, now we are taking the potential A B. A B means this and this end. Across this one, the potential is the current into resistance. The current through this path is I1 plus resistance is R1 plus the resistance of the inductance coil as well as the inductive reactance L1, J omega L1, which is equal to VAD. VAD is this one that is equal to I2 into resistance R2 plus VDE. VDE means potential across DE is current IC into small resistance. Now the equation 3 contains two unknown terms. One is I2 and another one is IC. Now we are going to determine these two unknown terms. To determine IC, the voltage across BC is equal to voltage across EC. Voltage across BC is current into resistance. The current is I1, I3 equal to I1 because the same current is passing in this path. So the I3 is equal to I1. Hence, we have taken the I1 current here, which is equal to IC. IC into the capacitive reactance here J omega C. Now we calculate the IC from this equation. IC is equal to J omega C I1 R3. To determine I2, we consider the loop D, E, C and D. So this is the loop we consider for the determination of I2. Now the voltage across this D, E plus E, C is equal to D C. Now voltage across D E is equal to this. D E equal to current that is I C into resistance R plus voltage across E C. E C is the current I C. The same current I C is passing in this way into the capacitive reactance that is J omega C which is equal to V D C. V D C is I4 into R4. Now we are taking the value of I4 from the equation 1 as we derived. So here ICR plus ICJ omega C is equal to I4 is taken from the equation 1 that is I2 minus IC into R4. So we know the value of IC that is J omega C I1 R3 now we are substituting the value of IC from the equation 4 in equation 5. J omega C into R plus IC values J omega C I1 R3 by J omega C that is written as such is equal to I2 into R4 minus IC value is here J omega C I1 R3. So J omega C I1 R3 into R4 is written as such. We are cancelling the J omega in the numerator as well as in the denominator in this term. And the remaining terms are written as such and this term is taken left side. So on taking this term we get J omega C I1 R3 R plus I1 R3 plus J omega C I1 R3 R4 is equal to I2 R4. Bring this R4 down, we got the value of I2 as well as IC. We are substituting the value of I2 and IC in the equation 3. So this is the equation 3. So I am substituting this IC and I2, we get this equation. We take I1 common on both sides. So here we have I1, here we have I1 and here we have I1. So taking this I1 common, 
we cancel this i1 on both sides and then we get this equation r1 plus r1 plus j omega l1 is equal to j omega c r3 r plus j omega c r3 r4 plus r3 by r4 into r2 plus j omega c r3 r so this is the equation that we get from the previous equation so now we have to take the real and imaginary parts separately so real parts in this equation so r1 plus r1 here these are marked with the orange color r1 plus r1 r1 plus r1 is equal to r3 here r3 is there and multiply by r2 by r4 is the term okay now we are equating the imaginary parts j omega is taken common now l1 is equal to c r3 r c r3 into r2 by r4 here plus this one c r3 r4 c r3 r4 into r2 by r4 that is marked with the gray color plus the last term c r3 r one trick is that r4 is multiplied and divided c r3 by r4 we take common so we get r4 into smaller plus c r3 by r4 we take common r2 r4 so by taking the smaller common between these two terms we get r2 plus r4 into smaller plus r2 r4 into c r3 by r4 this is the common expression l1 is equal to c r3 by r4 into r2 plus r4 into r plus r2 r4 so this is the final expression